In Winston's early days, there were two ways of getting from one place to another, walking or riding a horse. On pretty days, residents enjoyed walking downtown, sightseeing, and visiting along the way. Before streets were paved, a rainy day discouraged walkers, even though many merchants placed stepping stones across muddy paths to their stores. The horse and buggy was a reliable mode of transportation and had the advantage of being able to travel all over the city for just the cost of horse feed. In 1852, New York City established a transportation system using streetcars pulled by horses called horse cars. Soon, most major U.S. cities had such a system despite sanitary problems with the horses and the feeling that the animals were overworked and mistreated. In the meantime, inventors tried to find a suitable kind of mechanical power for streetcars. On March 11, 1889, the Winston-Salem Railway Company was incorporated. Among the organizers were Thomas Edison and an American engineer named Frank Sprague. The year before, Sprague had demonstrated a streetcar in Richmond, Virginia that was economical, durable, and powerful enough to ascend hills. His streetcars had motors that were powered by an electric current from an overhead power line. The current traveled from the line to the car's motor by means of a long pole. The pole had a small wheel called a shoe that slid or rolled along the line. This overhead mechanism was called a trolley, a term that was later applied to the entire vehicle. Sprague is given credit for designing the Winston-Salem Street Railway. Sprague Street, one of the longest routes, was named for him. When Winston streetcars began running on June 14, 1890, it was only the third or fourth system in the country. Residents marveled at their emergence into the electric age. Not only could they travel better, but now they could see where they were and where they were going with the new electric street lights. Five cars were put into service within the limited radius of the downtown area. Some of these areas were considered rural enough to require a cowcatcher on the front of the streetcar. The cars used in the city were open for ease of getting in and out, and they were light and could move swiftly. Shortly after 1895, the streetcars were converted to the closed type to keep passengers clean in the summer and warm in the winter. In 1900, Freeze Manufacturing and Power Company purchased the railway system. The track area was gradually expanded to cover more of the city. Nissen Park was built about this time near Watown by the streetcar company. Residents could travel to this distant area and enjoy a zoo, miniature train, wildlife trails, gardens, and a pavilion. There was also a roller skating rink called the Box Ball and lots of room for picnics and social gatherings. There was a special schedule to the park on Saturday and Sunday during the summer, and Sunday school classes often chartered a car for a picnic outing. When the Piedmont Park Company purchased land off North Liberty Street to relocate and expand the tobacco fair, the director persuaded the streetcar company to extend the line so residents could go to the fair. The streetcar company was concerned the line would have limited use, so the fair promoters offered discount fare tickets to anyone who rode the streetcar to the fair. When the streetcars were not in use or busy being repaired, they were housed in the car barn at the corner of Second and Church, where the federal building is located today. This is where the motormen or drivers went every morning at 5 o'clock to start their routes. The motormen were a hardy and dedicated group of men. When a driver was hired, he was first issued a fish brand raincoat because he was expected to keep going rain or shine. The first shift operated from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m., and the next shift operated from 3 p.m. to midnight, but might run longer if there were special shows in town or during fair time. Passenger tickets initially cost five cents, and the beginning pay for a motorman was 14 cents an hour. When it snowed, the motorman had to clean the tracks, even if it meant staying up all night cleaning, then driving all the next day. And then there were the pranksters who loved to grease the tracks with soap, particularly those going up Main Street Hill, just to see the sparks fly as the car tried to regain traction. Fortunately, the cars were equipped with a sandbox on each end and the motorman could pull a rope and drop a small amount of sand to keep him going. Sometimes the pranksters greased the curves and gave everyone a wild ride through town. Development in Winston-Salem closely paralleled the streetcar routes, even after the automobile made its appearance in town. In the beginning, only the rich people owned cars and they drove them only on Sunday. In 1913, Southern Public Utilities, or the SPU, owned the railway system. The company had approximately 26 cars and ran on a 15-minute schedule. 
The streetcars left from Courthouse Square and radiated to the four points of the compass, to East Winston, ending at City Hospital, out Sprague Street through Watown to Nissen Park, north on Liberty Street to Piedmont Park, and west on 4th Street to West End. They eventually traveled to Reynolds High School for carrying students to and from school. Buses began running in the early 1920s, but regular bus service began in 1926. With streetcars, automobiles, and now buses, the streets became crowded and crossing the street was hazardous. Passenger islands or safety zones were built around the courthouse square to make loading and unloading passengers safer. As early as 1929, there was discussion concerning removing streetcar tracks in favor of buses on North Liberty Street when it was time to widen and repave the street. More than 200 citizens petitioned the SPU to allow the streetcar to remain. In 1935, the streetcar system was transferred to Duke Power Company and began its last days of service, eventually being crowded out by cars and buses. Sensing the end of an era, the Chamber of Commerce sponsored a pageant called Romance of Transportation on December 29, 1936. On a cold and rainy Tuesday, residents lined Liberty Street to see the streetcars make a last run on the familiar tracks, ironically followed by their replacements. To make it truly a transportation parade, other vehicles, past and present, came along to share the occasion. Horse and buggies, fire wagons, bicycles, and even a stagecoach joined the parade route. R. L. Sheets began work as a motorman in 1912 for Freeze Manufacturing and Power Company and drove the last streetcar to the car barn off South Main Street at Salem Creek in 1936. Duke Power sold the remaining 19 cars for $50 to $100 to individuals who converted them to diners, shops, dwellings, even offices. Many of the motormen, such as Mr. Sheets, made the change to bus drivers, learning to maneuver the buses in and out of heavy downtown traffic. Some of the tracks were removed from the streets, but most were left in place and paved over. During World War II, there was a plan to remove the tracks for salvage, but this plan proved too costly. Over the years, street projects have uncovered the abandoned tracks and switching units beneath layers of pavement. In 1988, the Winston-Salem Transit Authority returned a site missing from the streets for 52 years when the trolley buses began their downtown routes. Remarkably, the 99-year-old motorman who drove the last streetcar to the barn in 1936 had a preview run on the bus and thought it much improved from the streetcars he once drove. Today, two of these trolley buses run a circular route in the downtown area carrying passengers in heated comfort for 25 cents. For a nostalgic ride into Winston-Salem's past, individuals or groups can rent a trolley for a special event, just as our forefathers did 100 years ago.